I just thought I'd do a really quick video. I was talking with Adam about this turbine, and he said that because mine's like an early release model, uh, almost like a prototype, that it may have uh, a wiring issue in in the control box here. So I printed up an adapter. Uh, it it failed partway through, but it's still successful in adapting torque input. Also, I designed it so that this could be on the turbine and hold it in place, but it would fit there and it doesn't. Uh, so this is what I have. And then that hooks to, in my case, uh, an inch and an eighth socket with a half inch socket adapter in my drill. And I have to run the drill in high speed to get enough RPMs. Okay, it works. So that was putting out the full power output into my power station. This is the load that it was plugged into. And even while it was full, it was taking all of those watts. So that's a, a good thing to have observed. And for a sanity check, he said it's supposed to be at one watt at 336 RPMs. So let me put this here and we can see That's one thing I don't like about these drills that have the automatic braking is that they have, well, braking and going from 0 to 336 RPMs and back is not good for it. And for watt output at higher RPMs, this is low gear. and high gear. Now I have to be careful not to go too high, otherwise it will shut off the output. My big drill can't maintain a steady output. It's constantly trying to fight against the controller of the water lily. So I'm gonna try this smaller boss drill that I have. See what kind of RPMs I can even do in the first place. And the battery's going, and uh, the the ripums were all over the place on this, so I'm not sure exactly what the correct reading there was. Probably around a thousand. And in case you were wondering what's inside this turbine, well, there's four screws around the perimeter. You just take those off, and then it's a just a trim ring. And well, it doesn't even really need to be there, other than to affect the flow of the water because it gives a smooth transition around the edge. And then there's some under here, some bearings. What are these? These are R4ZZ bearings. And you just slip this right out. Just bearings on both sides of this. The back side here, it has these power take in uh, ports that I added my 3D printed adapter to. It's kind of crude, but it works. And then in here, there's 
there's nothing to this except a bunch of coils in the perimeter. And then this has magnets in the perimeter of it. So magnets spinning in front of coils produces flux and therefore voltage and electricity. One thing of note with this is that there is no cogging. Like normally you would expect in a, in a generator that it would want to stick with the magnets in certain locations, but this does not. Partial reason for that is that the magnets in the perimeter of this are not very strong. And the wires in the perimeter of this are also not very strong. So they're going to have a lot of wraps with thin wire and that'll get you high voltages but lower current and high voltages at a low RPM for that matter. Another thing of note when testing this is that this power meter here, it has a rating of zero to 100 amps. And if we're only putting one amp into it or a little over one amp, then that's only 1% of its reading range. So that would affect its accuracy to the correct value. Also of note with this little watt meter that that 100 amps is a peak rating and that a continuous rating is likely less. These are 14 gauge wires, so the maximum current you would want to push through this continuously is probably about 15 amps. Even that's pushing it. So even though it's a 100 amp rating, uh, I don't know what, I don't know how this samples the power coming through it. But in comparison to a multimeter, it was measuring the correct amps and volts. So I do trust it. It's pretty darn close to being spot on. All right, like, comment, and subscribe. Links to all of these measuring devices are in the description. Even these Wago lever nuts that I like so much. I use them for testing things like this quickly all the time. The 3D printer that I'm using is an Ender 3 Pro. I did design this myself. They're supposed to be on the bottom of this. A little bit extra material. And then three clips that go down around the hub here. So they would go down the edge and clip on the bottom. And that would also secure it um, radially and axially. And then for torque, you have the pins that are going to stick down, which do work. So I'm going to chuck this in the lathe in a coming video and, and see what you can expect at different RPMs. Also note that this unit is working correctly. So my first results video, it was lacking in output. It was only doing a portion of the maximum current because the water was not sufficient for this thing to operate at its full capacity.